Hi, this is Ed Lieberman, and the following lesson is part of my Networking Fundamentals course. So here we are back on our Windows 7 client, and just like we saw in a previous lesson, in order to configure an IP address for this system, we need to be able to get to our network connection. So one way that we can get there is through the control panel. So I'm going to click on Start, Control Panel. Here we have Network and Internet. Takes us to the Network and Sharing Center. And in here, we can go to our adapter settings, local area connection, right click, properties, IP version 4, properties. And this is where we get to configure an IP address. So if we were not using DHCP, then we would click this button that says use the following IP address. We would tell it, I want it to be 192.168.10.100. That happens to be what the IP address was of this computer from the DHCP server. Or I could be anything. I could be dot one, dot ten, dot eleven, dot two forty. I mean I could put anything I want in here. Give it a subnet mask, point to a default gateway. So I happen to know that 192.168.10.1 is a router that gets me out of this office out onto the internet. I need to then point to a DNS server. I think I could do 192.168.10.1. I think I can do that. I also know that here on my network I have 1.11, 192.168.1.12. You'll notice those are not on my immediate network because I'm on the .10 network. But here in train signals offices I have the .1 network as well and there's a couple DNS servers out there. Or I could even point it to an internet DNS server. This is how you'd set it up manually. And in that scenario where we had over 600 computers spread around four different offices all around the world, we could go to each one and do this. Better make sure we have very good records. Remember who's got what IP address. Or we could just simply obtain an IP address automatically. And for that matter, we could also obtain our DNS server automatically. And when that happens, this client, just that simple, just that one click of the button, and by the way, it comes that way by default when you install it. That right there tells this client to go do the DORA process. So just that simple for configuring for DHCP. Now as long as we're in this screen right now, I'm going to actually take a quick step away from DHCP and just show you one other thing. And that is that there's this alternate configuration tab. And this has to do with if you are configured to obtain an IP address automatically. This alternate configuration is where you can set what you want the computer to do if it does not get a response back from a DHCP server, right? That's the one thing we didn't talk about. We didn't talk about what happens when you do the DORA process and during the D process, the discover, you say, hey, I'm a client, I'm looking for a DHCP server. Anyone out there who can help me? What happens when there's no response? Then what? Well, that's where the alternate configuration kicks in. And we have two choices. We can either do a PIPA, I've referenced that a couple times in previous lessons in this course, which stands for Automatic Private IP Address, which is where this computer will dynamically attempt to assign itself an IP address on the IP range 169.254. Okay, it's a B-class range, and it's not routable on the Internet, so you won't get to the Internet with that IP address. As a matter of fact, you won't get anywhere but your own local network with that IP address. So that's one option. Or you could actually have a user configured static configuration that you could put into each machine as a backup. And you may not do this to every single machine out in your network, maybe just certain crucial machines. And when it comes to being an IT professional, you know what a crucial machine is? Your own machine, right? Hey, they may all not be getting IP addresses, but I'm gonna make sure I have mine. And you know, we can say that and kind of laugh at it as in like we're giving ourselves special privileges, but let's be real. We should have special privileges because it's not just about, well, hey, none of you get to go out to the internet today. Ha ha, I do. No, it's more about how about I make sure I get an IP address so that I can troubleshoot why something is not working. And yeah, that happens all the time. There are many times where I don't necessarily use this on my own computer, but there are times where right here I'll be set to obtain an IP address automatically. Something's not working. I'll know what a valid IP address would be on my network, and I'll just come over here and I'll just give myself an IP address, and then I'll try troubleshooting to see what's going on. 
So that's how you can configure yourself to be a DHCP client. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training, please visit www.trainsignal.com.